Hey everyone, it's Erin. Erin? From the Paint and Tin Bin. Um, so this video is going to be a how-to on our B shape. Don't worry, we'll, I'll angle you down so you don't have to look at me the whole time. But I wanted to kind of go through a couple things. Um, so if you ordered a paint kit from us, the following things should have been included. If they are not, please get a hold of us. So you should have had some type of bow on your bag. Um, that hopefully you didn't throw that away or anything. Um, that is two purposes for that tells me what shape it is, but also this is your bow. So yours may look different from mine, depending on when you're watching this and the size of your shape. Um, your, especially if you had a 12 inch, um, I, I typically tend to do the tool bows, which are a little, that are a lot smaller just because they're little shapes. So, um, you need your bow. You should have a baggie of your paint, your sponge brushes and a detail brush, as well as some, uh, it's really hard to see, but these are the polka dots, okay? And then you should have had some sort of wire hanger. If you do not have a wire hanger, but the legs of your bow are longer, then this will be your, your hanger, and I'll walk you through all that, okay? And then obviously black and yellow and white paint. Yours probably came in a little shampoo bottle. Um, little cups, if may have been included in your kit. If cups were not included in your kit, go grab um, a paper plate uh, to kind of put them on there. Or the other thing is, is you could go get um, some aluminum foil, tin foil, and just kind of make a little boat um, and you could put it in there and then you just toss it. So that way you're good to go. Okay. Um, a couple of things. The paint we're using today is Sherwin Williams exterior latex paint. So it is going to stain and stay forever wherever you put it or don't put it and it decides to go. So you want to protect your area. Um, depending on how your paint kit came, if it came in a pizza box, you can um, unfold the pizza box flat and that would protect your area. If it came in a bag, you can kind of snip one of the sides and it's just brown paper like this that I have here, like what I have here in the workshop. Um, a disposable plastic um, tablecloth to protect your area, some newspapers, some old magazines, um, whatever it may be, just be cautious or an old towel. Um, just be cautious. Like if you were to use like an old, old sheet or something, you may want to double or triple it up just because if you do spill paint on it, it will still seep through the, the fabric. So just keep that in mind. And I'm trying to think exterior takes paint. Also, it'll stain your clothes. So, um, careful with that. Make sure you're either wearing an apron or something. And then the other thing is, is to have some paper towels on hand, um, just in case. Okay. So just be very mindful of that and keep the dogs <laughs> away. The dogs are not in the workshop tonight with me when I'm doing this, uh, video, as you can tell, cause it's really quiet and they're not playing and, you know, play barking at each other. So, um, but let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to kind of air angle you down. Oh, the other thing that may be beneficial to you, you don't necessarily have to do it because the way I'm going to do the, the B tonight, it, I'm going to show you how to do it as quickly as possible without using a hairdryer. But if you have a hairdryer at home that has a cool setting, it must have a cool setting. You can use that to, um, dry your shape quicker. I'll probably do it maybe once just so that you, I can talk people through it. Uh, if you're not using a hair dryer, you just kind of fast forward. And um, so yeah, let's get started. I'm gonna, sorry. All right, so here is our B shape. And you know what, I just noticed that I did not stencil my shape. So let me grab a pencil. My apologies, video is starting out a little rough tonight. So more than likely your shape came stenciled. If it did not, I guess this is kind of a how-to as well. What you can do for the wings is you could go from where the neck and the wing meet all the way down to where the wing and the the bee, the bum, the bee bum 
uh, meat, okay? And you're gonna do that on both sides. I didn't do it super straight. I just kind of hand drew it. It's, it can be a little hard to see on camera. The other thing you're gonna wanna do if it's not stencil is neck to neck. <coughs> okay. So um, I'm gonna kind of walk you through a process that will get it done as quickly as possible. But I do want to um, show you that. Yeah. But so let's get started. We're actually gonna do the wings first. So everything is primed when it comes to you. And this is just primer. And it didn't, your paint kit should have included some white. So I'm just gonna go right up to that line that I just drew. And I'm going to paint the wings, give them a coat of, of solid white. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, if you're gonna go wild and crazy and do some kind of different looking bee, that's totally fine. Um, I think I'm gonna keep my bee pretty traditional. And keep them black and yellow with white wings. I might add some accents to it, but uh, we'll see. So you'll notice that for my first coat, I am going up and down. It doesn't matter which direction you go for your coats of paint. However, there is some logic, I don't know what it is, but I've seen it with my own two eyes, that if for the first coat you go up and down, coat number two, because we are always gonna do two coats, um, you will go left to right. The reason why we do two coats is because we keep our coats of paint thin and we want as much coverage as possible. So the other thing to kind of keep in mind when you are painting your shape is you may want to just do a quick swipe around the edge just to paint the edge. Um, right now on the wings, it's a little hard to see if I need to paint the edge, but um, it'll become more apparent that you need to do the edges when we do the black areas, okay, which we're going to do next. So, so while this, while the wings are drying, okay, so again, that was really quick, just nice, quick, thin coats of all the paint that we're going to use this evening, although it's my evening, it could be 11 a.m. where you are, I don't know, so... Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the head and the beat, the buzzer, the, the stinger, sorry, <laughs> buzzer, whatever. Um, so I'm going to dip it in my paint and I'll do the head first so, since you can see that. And again, I'm going to go up and down for my first coat. So I go right up to that line and I just kind of push my paintbrush down and then um, drag it up. So again, going back to the thin coats of paint, the reason why we do thin coats is because um, the metal is not porous. So when you are painting a, a wall in your home, if you go on a thicker coat, you, you know, and sometimes you get ridges, they typically will be, get soaked in by the drywall. Well, that, uh, that's not the case when you're working with metal. So we have to keep our coats thin uh, for that reason. But also the other reason is that they dry faster. So the thinner the coats, the faster they dry. And so, and when you're kind of off of like a, a line, you know, you're kind of careful up at the line, but then when you're up here, you're just kind of back and forth. It's okay. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect like our motto is, perfectly imperfect. So, and I'm gonna go up here to the antenna as well. So, so really appreciate you shopping small business and purchasing the B paint kit for whatever reason you did. So I'm going to show you what I was talking about along the side. So you see how the side of the metal is still white from the primer? If you just do a real quick swipe, it gets a little trickier down there, um, it'll cover it up. And you're, you may be thinking that's really not that important, but 
Um, trust me when it's hanging on your door and your door maybe is not a white door and it'll stick out. <laughs> you only thankfully have to do the sides once. So, um, so that's, yeah, that's the sides. I think I'm also gonna make the stinger black. So I'm gonna go down here. Kind of do that. And yeah. Okay. So this is what we got so far. We got the white wings. We've got a black head and we've got a black stinger. So they're all wet still and that's okay. And I'm gonna use, my, my wings are drying. So um, I am gonna show you how to use a hair dryer to dry your project and to keep it safe. So um, has to be cool setting. Cool, 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 okay? Cool, all right, cool. Um, the reason being is that if you were to use a hot air setting or, an, or a warm air setting on your hair dryer, um, it would heat up the metal, the metal would, would expand, and then the paint can't, will no longer grip the metal. So we would kind of, the paint would fall off, it would bubble up and fall off, um, and you would have to start all over again. Nobody wants that. So, um, I'm going to show you, uh, mine is just a good old Dollar General hair dryer. I have to hold this button in the entire time that I am using it to keep it on the cool setting. Yours may or may not be different, but my, I encourage you to just make sure it's cool um, and on the cool setting. Um, if you do not have a hair dryer at your disposal, or if you just choose not to use a hair dryer, that is perfectly fine. What you can, I would say, go take the dog for a walk, go play with the dog outside, take the trash out, um, give it about 10 minutes, and then it all should be dry. Um, definitely the wings would be dry. There may be some spots on the, on the head or the buzzer, the stinger that may be wet a little bit, but um, we're gonna go back to the wings. But let's go ahead. I'm going to wave that I'm starting the hair dryer so you can mute it um, just because I'm not super fancy and don't know how to do that in my videos yet, yet. Um, and then when I wave again, that means I've turned it off and you can turn the volume back up. So here we go, I'm gonna show you some things. Okay, welcome back. So, um, two things that I wanted to talk about that I did while I was using the hair dryer. The first thing that you saw me do was just kind of doing a light rub to see if there was any paint that came off. And that's not from here. Um, that's one way to tell if it's dry. And you saw me kind of doing this. The other thing you kind of saw me doing was kind of like moving it back and forth. What that was doing was showing me that the wet spots are bright colored or, or the, the light catches them. 
Um, so this little section was a little wet and then this little section was a little wet. And um, so I could kind of like wiggle it in the light to see the shiny spots and to know to target my, my air to there. Um, it, it does go a lot faster if you use a hair dryer. So, I mean, it's, that's one positive for using it, but you don't have to. It just kind of depends on how much time you got. So, um, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to do the center belly now. So we're going to do this whole center of the B yellow. Now you may be thinking, but Aaron, these have stripes. That is true, but we'll get to them. Okay. So again, you saw me go right up to that line um, that I had with that wing. Pushing my paint around, keeping it smooth, and pushing it around. I'm going to go up here last, so I'm going to want to get all of this done. So the yellow, we are... We will have to do at least two coats of yellow, just because yellow is not a color like black or red or blue that has a lot of pigment um, in it as, as a, and then don't forget your edges, um, as a paint. So it's a little thinner usually, um, or more watery, some people say. I, I don't think it's necessarily more watery, but, um, I just think it it takes a little bit more, could take up to three coats for coverage. And then um, I also encourage you to like move your shaper. Like just because you commit to having it one way on your, on your workspace doesn't mean that it has to stay that way. Okay. So um, I'm going to go in here, do some things. So... Now, since we're doing the yellow right now, that's gonna give us the opportunity to do, while that's drying, to do a second coat of the black. So, um, if you do get lots of ridges in your paint, um, just move it around, kind of like what I'm doing right here, and, um, it sh you should be able to kind of spread your paint out. If not, don't be afraid So, like, to try and pick it up so you can pick it up and then just bring it over to your bottle and kind of wipe some of it out. So, all right. All right, starting to look like a bee. So while that is drying, while the yellow is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and do um, the black, the second coat of black again. And I'm gonna start down here with the stinger. Hey, I remembered that word this time. started and again for your second coat if you can I mean obviously the stinger it's a little hard to switch directions just because it's only so big um, it will provide a little bit better coverage you won't see as many brush strokes if that's um, if that is sometimes coming through um, or I mean, if you, you, maybe you like it like this, like there are, are, your design options are entirely up to you. You can do a more rustic bee and kind of have that kind of distressed look, um, on the bee. I will sometimes do items in that distressed look. Uh, I'm going just more for just kind of a fun and cute and whimsical bee right now. So pretty standard. But, um, so yeah, I know on this YouTube channel, um, so that not only are there other shape videos on here, but there are also some design videos. So on those design videos, like I give directions on how to do like an ombre effect. 
um, how to do buffalo plaid check, stripes, you know, all kinds of different ways that you can incorporate different designs um, on completing any shape. It could be any shape. So um, I encourage you, if you haven't already, take a, take a look at those. We always, uh, as a new, as we come up with a new design idea, we always try to get it up there as soon as we can, as long as we know that it's going to be foolproof <laughs> or as foolproof as possible. So, all right. And then again, as we come up to this line, just being super careful. And then there's just a few locations that need oops see there we go not a day goes by where i don't got paint somewhere okay all right so right now we're waiting for the yellow to dry and we're waiting for the black to dry in both locations i'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of a design that i think some may be interested in so i just got done painting black okay spread this around sorry moved it and i saw some things i'm going to take a paper towel and wipe it okay oops sorry wipe it and then what i want you to do is i just want you to just follow the edge now i want you to look at it don't do it if you don't want to do it but i'm going to do like a 45 degree angle not straight on but a 45 degree angle and i'm just going to kind of go around and around all right, that got a little thick, but hey, we're all God's creatures. It works, okay? That, no, that's all I'm gonna do. I think that's really super cute. Um, that gives it just a little bit of dimension. You can make them wider, okay? Actually, I kind of do like that a little wider, and that's just me going flat out to the edge. So this is kind of a, a way that I teach people also how to distress. So layering your colors um like this so it's kind of like not not solid is a way to kind of show distress um as well um this dries really fast okay so um except for that part i'm sure but what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how you can incorporate the yellow so grab your skinny brush dip it in the yellow and then just kind of follow that same swoosh pattern it's a very technical term in the painting world, swoosh. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> um, so there you go. I mean, that's all I'm doing is just following that curve and um, putting some detail in there and voila, the um, wings are done. So all of the, um, pen, the paintbrushes that you have received, especially these and this one, or whatever your skinny brush looks like, can be washed um just in some you know cool to slightly warm um water and can be reused so if you're a crafty person and you want to add some paint brushes to your to your stash by all means please do um that's what we do in the workshop is we we wash them as much as possible so I know I said I wasn't going to use the um, hair dryer too much, but I think I am going to use it just to speed this up. Um, but again, the glory of this video is that you can pause it, rewind it, you can turn it off, you can put it on mute and just see what I do. You'll all be good. So, um, actually, something just came to me. Provide a little bit of that. So see the, the yellow and the black is not anything like super formal, super strict, it's just kind of whatever. But I am gonna use the hair dryer just to dry this up um, so we can get coat number two on the yellow. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll wave when it's going on and wave when it's going off.
turn that bad boy off, okay? So here we are, we've got our B so far. My yellow is dry, and in the process, you saw me really focusing the hair dryer on the yellow, um, and it did dry up a majority of the space around the yellow. So um, we're just going to now do, since my previous paper towel went flying, um, we're gonna do the stripes. Now there's a variety of ways that you can do the stripes. You can um, use painter's tape or masking tape and make very straight lines if you wish. Um, you could get a ruler and draw like with a pencil, um, you know, lines if you wanted perfectly straight lines. Um, I can do that. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do it freehand and just kind of let it be what it is, a bee. So I'm gonna dip it, um, dip my brush into, um, you can kind of see I kind of loaded it up a little bit, but then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna wipe it all off. Well, most of it off, okay? So, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start over here and go over that way. So what I'm essentially doing is the same distress um, technique that we did along the wings. I'm gonna also do it over here. And then I probably, um, I'm gonna go back here, get some a little bit more paint. Um, I'm gonna go right here. Okay. So, um, let me see, I think this one needs, needs it like right there. And this is an exact, if you feel you need to get more paint, just go grab a little bit. Again, wipe it off. And then, and what I'm doing is I'm just putting, spacing these out about a paint brush's width. And then I do my next stripe. So, and it goes a little sideways, that's all right. Um, and that really big thing, it is what it is. Oh no, I gotta go over here. So, um, so this is another way. Again, you can, doesn't have to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Perfectly imperfect is actually better than perfect, if you think about it. I just need a little bit for, I think, only just one more. Um, yeah. And I think this, um, I mean, you made it, that makes it even more special to um, you or if you're keeping it or whomever you're giving it to. And, you know, it's homemade, it's handmade. That's always gonna be more valuable than um, production made, you know, a production line. So, but again, you saw that I'm I'm done like I'm I'm piecing out with this bad boy but I'm going to show you the other things um you do have stickers it's polka dot stickers so um I might be able to see them better no okay sorry uh oh there you go okay um these are exterior vinyl so Wherever you stick them, they are going to wear well outside. They are rated for five years of continuous outdoor wear. So you could literally put this bee outside for five years and the polka dots should be fine. As long as the paint underneath them, that where you applied it is super dry when you do it and things like that. So um, if you wanna use them, great. If you don't wanna use them, great. Put them on some other art projects, if you will. Um, they are not vinyl for t-shirts. They will fall off in the washer, so just know that. I had someone upset with me once that the polka dots didn't stay on the t-shirt after she washed it. And I said, well, no, different kind of vinyl. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna do any polka dots on here. Like, I'm really kind of liking this rustic-ish. I guess I ended up kind of doing a rustic uh, B, so to speak. So. Um, so if you want them, great. If you don't want them, great. 
Let's go to uh, then our wire hanger, okay? So this is, not to scare you, um, electrical fence wire. Uh, the reason why we use this is because it doesn't rest. You know, that's the key. The metal we're using today is galvanized steel, so it's not going to rust either. The paint is exterior latex paint. It's not gonna wash away. Oops, see, that's still wet. Um, and this is not going to rust either. So um, I'm going to kind of move you over this way a little bit. So this is the easiest way to do your hanger. Find your hole on your B and bring it over the edge, okay? So my table stopped like right here, all right? So this is over the edge. And what I want you to do is either grab a pair of needle nose pliers, I think that's what these are called, um, or wire cutter, no, wire cutters, but needle nose pliers would work too because you're not cutting it. Um, you could also use a pen that has a cap, anything that you can use to twist it. So you're gonna go, you're gonna take one end of your wire and you're gonna go from the bottom up, okay? So here's my wire, it's hard to see, I know, I apologize. Grab it and twist. Twist. I usually give it about three good twists, okay? And then you got a, like a messy corkscrew is kind of what you're gonna do. And then you're gonna do the same thing with the other side of the metal, okay? So you're gonna, again, back to front. So you got a, a, at least an inch and a half or so, and you're gonna twist and twist. Now, if you only get two twists, that's okay. Don't stress out. We're not going for perfection here. All right, so we have our holder, all right. And now we're gonna grab our bow, and I'm gonna refer to the back of the bow as pant legs, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put one pant leg through that hole. Now it's gonna be a little tight, everyone's gotta get along, but you can usually get one pant leg in, then the other pant leg goes over the side, okay? And then, so see that's what it looks like, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna twist it, okay? And then you can cut those off. I'll do that before, later on, but you can cut these, these extra off. And there's your completed B. How cute is that? So this is a really quick and easy shape that a lot of people enjoy, especially in the spring and summertime. Um, I appreciate you purchasing a paint kit from the Painted Tin Bin here in Springfield, Illinois. And I hope to see you soon. Cheers.